Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is preseason football on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the GOAT, Tom Brady and the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots as they take on the 11-year man Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday night football. And on the call, as always, it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And, of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champion New England Patriots. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And, Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. And I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. On the other side of the field for the visiting Patriots, an early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. Steven Goskowski now to kick this one off. And we are underway from Ford Field. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. The Lions offense and Matthew Stafford ready to go here. Stafford still a solid quarterback in his 11th season now. But the Lions still yet to win a playoff game under his guidance. And last year's mark of 6-10 the worst since 2012 for the Lions. here on first down. Oh, he's going to take a shot. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jason you McCourty. Boy, an aggressive play call to start this game. It backfired, but aggressive, no question about that. Is that one of those statement calls? Trying to let you know that they're going to be aggressive right out of the gate, but that one hung up just a little bit too long. He made a nice play on the ball defensively and was able to pick it off. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Very good starting position for the Patriot offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. Now Brady. That's out to his running back, Michelle. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that'll make this a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. To throw again on second down, Brady. That's caught by his tight end, Matt Lacoste. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. On first and 10, here's Brady. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. Jared Davis came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Hey, 
After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. To throw is Brady, and he's going to go down again. Damon Harrison bringing in 341 pounds of power for the sack. But this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Brady. And he's got Edelman for the first time. That's complete. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent gain. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the pass three. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this will remain a scoreless game. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. It's a pickup of five. Brings up second down. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. No score after one on EA Sports. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. And Anderson's got it. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. They will come up on a first and five following the encroachment penalty. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Let's go. They get five, and it will go ahead and move the chains. 
So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing his fails. Rolling to his right. He'll run it. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion, or even worse, an interception. Looking to throw again on second down. Fails. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Here's Anderson. He's got it on the draw. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Now a timeout called for by the offense as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now fails. On the move to his left. And he's going to keep it here. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Throwing again on second down. Fails. Screen play. Anderson. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. The Lions into the red zone for the first time. They've got a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he'll complete this one to Fulgham. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Second and three. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. Jermaine Curse there to make the grab as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here. And got his man complete! Heck of a start, a 30-yard pickup on their first play from scrimmage. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed, now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. Meanwhile, they take a shot to... ...start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. That is incomplete. 
So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. It is back to football for 22 teams here on this Thursday night, minus the Broncos and Falcons who played last week. And we want to remind you that we are now 28 days away from the opener of the 100th season of NFL football, the Packers and the Bears at Soldier Field. In our game, the defenses look to be ready for the regular season. Maybe not the offenses just yet, but still a half to go as we get you back out to Brandon God. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. A big play there for New England. 48 yards. Well, you had all halftime to think about what you wanted to do to start the second half. They came out with a big one. Does that not beg the question? What was happening in the other locker room at halftime? Was that the one play they didn't cover as a possibility? Because they just gave up a big, big game. Got it. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there were very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. They come out with one back and three tight ends. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. They'll run it here. This is James White. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Second and goal from the one. Hoyer. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Jalen Reeves Maven. Coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. Now Hoyer. And he's going to have the hook up to Izzo. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. Then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried the crossing route against it, and it worked for a completion, but you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them, no pickup. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. Let's go. Here's Hoyer. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. On 
the ready. 44, Mike, Mike, 44. Here we go, here we go. Step. They start the drive with Anderson. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Jamie Collins, formerly of the Browns, hit on the tackle. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Here we go, here we go. 15, one, 15, one. You got five. They run it again with Anderson. And he will double the space they have to work with as they take it from the two to the four. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And they're able to corral him right around the eight, and that's short of the first down. Here's Sam Martin now. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. And now Edelman. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A great return there of 22 yards. And the Patriots will have great starting position as they take over first and 10. So the Patriots now down 7 nothing. A minute 50 to play. You can't say the preseason isn't interesting. This has been great as they come up first and 10. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Brandon, it's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Back to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Well, a design run for their wideout. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. And while we're seeing more and more of these plays come from the college game into the NFL, and that one, it was run with great success, how about the evolution of the offensive linemen? We're seeing less and less big guys who can't move, and more and more guys who are a lot more mobile and can get out in front of that type of a play. decision to make on the conversion down seven but first things first they need to score as they come up on first and goal they'll try and run it in with white legs still churning like a jack and he keeps fighting his way into the end zone for a patriot touchdown Taking it in from two yards out as they can now tie the game with the extra point here in the final two minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. A drive there of just four plays, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Steven 
So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. No gain that time on the completion and it'll be third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Jamie Collins in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking, but to me it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. Here's Sam Martin now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Edelman set to return. Well, nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. The Pats at the line, ready to go. They can still get into field goal range, partner. They got to work quickly, though. I agree with you totally. Find a way to get the ball downfield and out of bounds in a perfect world. It's caught at the 10. And he's in for the touchdown. And in the final seconds, forget overtime. They just likely won this thing in regulation. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through. All the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. The point after try for Goskowski. And it would appear they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone. Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away this will be fielded at the six well Charles this one's going to be hard to digest you take the lead into the fourth quarter lose that lead maybe they felt like they let this one slip away a little bit they will definitely feel like that because when you have a lead in the fourth quarter all you talk about doing is finishing and closing a game out but when you flip it over how about that making the comeback and then finishing the game sealing it on defense they will feel jubilant in their locker room 
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night from Detroit.